Hello, Cryptonauts. Welcome back to another episode of Cryptocurrency Chat. I am your host, Blockchain John, here with my co-host, Jake Jabarelli. And, of course, our guest, Satoshi Nakamoto, hanging out with us today to uh, give you the top 10 daily stats as well as your crypto news of the day. So, with that said, uh, Jake, it's the weekend. How's your weekend so far? Pretty relaxing, actually, other than the fact that my job never stops. <laughs> <laughs> I think some people might be annoyed by that, yeah. that they don't ever get a break. But the difference is I take a break when I take because I'm my boss and I, I tell me when to do things. I can also slack off. I can tell. I can tell myself, no, dude, I ain't doing that right now. And I myself can say to myself, okay, man, take a break. Look, I'm, I'm personally a little bit excited because uh, um, PulseX is actually like done doing their uh, their sacrifice time. Yeah. So I'm, I'm actually waiting for the release now of PulseX, and so right now they're, uh, 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 what's the name? Hart is working on the. Uh, Richard Hart's working on the third, um, I guess, uh, testnet, mm-hmm. the third generation testnet, and so the main net's supposed to be coming out after this. So after three testnets, so far success, all the patches are, are fixed, and the next one is main chain. So once that releases, we'll see where, where we stand with uh, with all these distributions. I'm a little excited about that. It's, like, yeah, it's the first time that I invested a lot of, a lot into a project, and. Uh, hoping the best spread yeah i was gonna say that there's another piece of news i want to read from uh it came from bankless but we can get to that later after we've done the our cool. regular news from crypto potato so so with that said let's uh transition over to the top 10 daily stats provided by coingecko.com uh let's see jake you want to take this sure thing i don't mind doing it all it's been a while so uh hitting the refresh get the latest numbers all right, Bitcoin still number one. Why is that not expected? Of course, it's expected. That that's just what it is. So, Bitcoin is in the number one position currently at thirty-nine thousand one hundred twenty-eight fifty-five. A almost no gain, 0.1 percent in the last week, to a market cap of seven hundred forty-two billion point five, seven hundred forty-two point five billion dollars. It's up just ever so slightly. Ethereum in the second spot, as it has been for ages, pretty much since it existed. Although I know Litecoin used to be up there. <clears throat> Currently, twenty-six thirty-nine fifty-four, by a seven-day loss of about five percent and a market cap of three hundred sixteen point two billion. Ethereum is in the third position at one dollar, since it is a stable coin. It doesn't have much of a rise or a fall. You said Ethereum. A, sorry, Tether. Because if you take the T off, it looks like Ethereum. <laughs> it does. Yeah, you're right. T Ether. Yeah. It's T Ether, exactly. Uh, Tether. Oh, I'm going to call it Tether. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to call it that. Tether, USDT. Anyways, its current market cap is $79.9 billion. Binance, Binance uh, BNB, is currently $381.99, a 2.2% weekly gain, and a $64.1 billion market cap. The fifth position is another stable coin called USD Coin, created by Circle and used often a lot by um, Coinbase. Currently, the dollar uh, seven-day fluctuation of 0.2 percent down, that is, and a market cap 52.9 billion. In sixth position is Ripple, still falling, <laughs> still falling, but it hasn't fallen out of sixth place because it still has a five billion dollar lead over Terra. Currently, 75 or 74.9. Well, I guess 75 cents is close enough. Uh, 0.8% loss in the last week, and a $35.7 billion cap. Terra is in seventh position. Luna, Terra, same thing. 81.61, yeah, 81.61 is the current price, and a 5% gain in the last week. Still going up, but still, like I said, it's got a ways to go. It's currently sitting at a market cap of 30 billion. In eighth position, Solana, 86.02. Uh, a seven, uh, seven-day loss of five, four and a half percent, and a market cap of twenty-seven point five billion. Cardano is in position nine. That's ADA. Its price is about eighty-five cents. It is about a five percent loss over the last week, and a twenty-seven, pretty close to Solana, about twenty-seven billion dollar market cap. It's about half a billion dollars away. Avalanche is currently in the tenth position at seventy-four one and a 10% almost 10% loss of last week 
and a 20.7, pardon me, 19.7 or almost $20 billion market cap. And then the top five after that, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, we have Polkadot, Binance, USD, also a stable coin, Dogecoin, and then weirdly enough, Terra has taken the 14th position away from Shiba Inu. And so now Terra is in 14th and Shiba Inu is in 15th position. But the split is different. It's like um, Shiba Inu was following Doge pretty closely, about $3 billion apart. But since uh, Terra is a stable coin um, and it's tied to the Terra coin, which is in seventh position, it's been gaining a lot lately in market cap. So, um, yeah, that's all I got to say about there. Uh, we have the uh, total market cap is down about 1.5% in the last 24 hours to uh, 1.83 trillion. So it fell a bit, but you can probably see those from the seven day charts. It kind of looks like a dinosaur. Um, and then oh, if you I go guess. to the, <laughs> we go, uh, I guess it's Stegosaurus, right? <laughs> but, um, or no, is it Stegosaurus? Yeah, I guess it is. It's the spiky back dinosaur. Um, if you go to the candy jar in the upper right hand corner next to where it says the portfolio button, if you have portfolio, uh, you can click on the candy jar and collect your candies. You need to be logged in to do this. I'm currently not logged in on this browser, but um, John may be. Um, yeah, collect your candies and you can get uh, all kinds of NFTs uh, that CoinGecko offers as rewards, as well as books, which we highly recommend. Uh, there's books like How to DeFi, um, How to Bitcoin, How to Ethereum, all kinds of things, as well as a whole bunch of, of deals on things like Coin Tracker uh, and VPNs. So, interesting little freebies and uh, deals. Highly recommend that you check out using those candies. You can just keep collecting them every day. Eventually get to thousands, tens of thousands like John and I. Unless you're one of those crazy people who's been on it for longer than we have and you have 10, you know, 30,000. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's, I think that's everything with CoinGecko. We can get onto the news, right? Yep. All right, Cryptonauts. Let's head on over to the crypto news of the day provided by CryptoPotato.com. First news is, uh, should I read the Polygon one? Oh, is it what Polygon is Polygon? Polygon news is, it's just telling you, it's just, it's just a description of Polygon. Unless you think people want to know what Polygon is, because it's a, it's a guide for dummies. Okay, for our, our listeners aren't dummies. They're, they're, they're very savvy long. crypto people. I'll skip it. I'll the Russian, the Russian one was the one I was Ru going to. We're Russia. trying to skip over the... Analysis and the uh, what is because yeah. people read that on their own. Yeah, this is uh, Russia turns to China's Union Pay system amid Visa and Mastercard departures, written by Jordan Lanchev. <clears throat> Visa and Mastercard joined the growing list of Western financial companies that announced plans to withdraw from Russia, looking for alternatives. The nation's central bank said it has turned to China's Union Pay system. President Vladimir Putin launched a special military operation against Ukraine less than two weeks ago, which still continues until this day with no real endgame in sight for either side. NATO and the EU decided not to escalate the conflict by getting involved directly through military actions of their own. Instead, they opted for a more 21st century option imposing all sorts of sanctions against the country, the oligarchs, people around Putin, the ordinary citizens. Most of those measures targeted the Russian Federation financial system. Among the first ones was removing multiple banks from SWIFT. During this weekend, it became known that some of the largest Western financial companies will also halt ser servicing Russians, including Visa, MasterCard, and PayPal. While speculations arise whether local locals will turn to cryptocurrencies given the skyrocketing trading volume since the war started, Russia's central bank outlined another solution. The institution said that local lenders will be able to use China's Union Pay system founded 20 years ago and headquartered in Shanghai, China, Union Pay, known as CUP or UPI International, operates in over 180 countries according to Russia's central bank. It's also worth noting that the organization said Union Pay could work together with Russia's own payment system, Mir. Well, there you go. Now we got the I Russians mean, Union Pay has been around together. forever. Yeah, Union Pay has been around for a long, long time. That's not new, mm -hmm. um, and you know it's not somewhat understandable. China is a big country, like the United States, and it would offer something that was, you know, originated in their country to uh, as a payment system. But uh, yeah, I think this is proof positive that Putin was not expecting 
the Russian people to fight back. His, his narrative, as it was put out by a lot of different um, uh, YouTube channels I've been paying attention to lately, have said that he was expecting, based on his, his, his uh, what we call right-wing nationalist perspective with these, these like neo-Nazi groups that were kind of on the fringe of Ukraine, he was expecting that the Russian people, as well as the Ukrainian people, would, you know, would lay down their arms. Would, would, they wouldn't even take up arms at all. They'd be just like, oh yeah, these neo-Nazis, we hate them. They're, they're ruining our country. Please help us, Mr. Putin. They would just done that. And, and um, that's not what they did, unfortunately. So his expectation was incorrect. <laughs> so nobody wants to go to war. No. It seems, it, it's a different, I don't know how to put it. We don't have a good record of the last time the world, the entire world was like this, other than maybe Rome, you know, 2,000 years ago. But, but like I said, we don't have a really good record of it, so it's hard to know exactly what everybody was thinking. There wasn't really a social media thing of that sort 2,000 years ago <laughs> to give us a perspective of what everyone was thinking. Well, well, continuing on here with more in Metaverse news. I don't know if this is going to be... Uh, this is, I don't know, I, I kind of feel weird about talking about this particular thing. It's not really news, it's kind of just trend information. I'm going to skip and go to the Malaysia thing here. Mm -hmm. um, so, this is how Malaysia plans to fight electricity theft for Bitcoin mining. That's apparently people steal electricity more often in Malaysia rather than just paying for it. George Georgiev wrote this. Malaysia is a national electric electricity utility is ramping up plans to halt electricity theft has been reportedly been on the rise. This has to do with Bitcoin mining, which is supposedly also catching speed. Electricity theft in Malaysia is supposedly a serious issue, according to a report from late January this year. The local government is thinking of possible ways to limit its spread as it has recorded an increase of 400% in the last four years. That's a lot. The above uh, has reported Res reportedly resulted in a loss of um, RM 2.3 billion, that's the local currency, which is roughly equivalent to half a billion dollars US per uh, Tadiyudin uh, Hassan, the country's natural resources minister. The increase in cases is a worrying trend as it affects not only the energy industry in terms of value, but also the stability and electricity supply system and public safety. In 2021, Malaysian authorities seized a whopping, there's that word again, uh, <laughs> $13 million worth of crypto mining equipment, and it appears that the country is gearing up for implementing further countermeasures. Tanaga uh, Nacional Berdad, or TNB, is the largest electricity utility in Malaysia. The country's sovereign wealth fund, Kazana uh, Nacional BHD, is the largest shareholder. TNB has reportedly uh, proposed the introduction of a special tariff for Bitcoin mining operators. Moreover, it also it is also suggested the country's energy commission pressure Bitcoin mining operators to apply for electricity supply from legal sources. Speaking on the matter was Tanaga's CEO Baradin, uh, Bar Baharadin Din, who said. The irresponsible perpetrators are, are doing it at the expense of the security and reliability of the supply for the public at large. Well, I know I'm going to make my own commentary on this, but um, there's, there's rule of law and there's the respect of rule of law. Um, if there isn't a super high level of respect for the rule of law, then there are just going to be people who trample all over it and ignore it. The example I keep thinking of is... Um, certain countries where the traffic laws just don't seem to apply to anyone and if no one takes the initiative you're just not going to get any result um in particular it's a great uh, video a uh, ted talk rather from a, a fellow who lives in mumbai india who was making a point about how indian culture uh, infused a little bit with british culture but still indian culture um, gives a weird blind eye to garbage on the street if it's not your jurisdiction, you ignore it. Um, and the problem with that is that 
it leads to garbage piling up on the streets of Mumbai. And it just, you know, in the in a nice section of the city where very wealthy people live, there's just garbage all over the streets. And you look at it going, how would you even know nice, you know, people live here? Well, it's because one, the city hasn't taken care of picking up the refuse. And then as long as it's not on your property, you ignore it. And that's just the, the way people look at it. So it's the same thing here with Malaysia. Um, if no one's reporting because they either don't care or there's no incentive in it for them, then the Malaysian authorities won't find out about it until four years later, like this article is pointing out. Um, and if, if there isn't, you know, citizens concern for the rule of law, or they're maybe thinking, you know, maybe it's, it's um, criminals that are doing the, the theft. It, obviously, theft typically implies criminal, but whoever's doing it is doing it illegally and dangerously in the sense of, like, if you tell anybody we'll kill you, then why would the citizens citizenry talk about it? They're not going to. So, um, rule of law is important, and I'm not saying Malaysia isn't, but if you want to take care of a problem like this, you need to make the citizens empowered, mm -hmm. not just give them electricity. <laughs> Yeah, the reason I skipped that article, the retail interest there in the metaverse, and even though it is a metaverse story, is it's for one, it's really short, but mostly it's just from my, you know, review of it, just kind of an analytics thing, and I don't really want to read the analytics stuff. Or read news, you know. Yeah, exactly. So, so um, there's the coin shares yeah. thing. I don't know if that's of interest to you. Coin shares, uh, Meltem Dim. De, what is it? Demurs? De Demurs? Demurs. Dem, Demurs. Dem, Demurs. On how Bitcoin can become a risk off asset. Written by George Georgiev. In the past couple of weeks, geopolitical tension in Europe escalated so much that it transitioned to an invasion of a sovereign country and a flat out war that currently is taking place on its territory. We saw that most of the Western countries sanctioned Russia for its invasion of Ukraine by means they had in their possessions, including expulsions from SWIFT, pulling out businesses from the country, cutting all sorts of economic ties, and so forth. Cryptocurrency exchanges were also asked to halt servicing Russian customers. Amid this uh, tumultuous? Tumultuous? Tumultuous. Tumultuous. <laughs> economic and geopolitical climate. Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general were touted as an alternative asset that's apolitical and uncorrelated to traditional finance. Shipping in on the matter was Mel Melton Demars, the chief strategy officer at CoinShares. Before we dive into what Ms. Demars had to say, it's worth explaining what risk on and risk off assets are. Risk on and risk off assets have much to do with notion of risk sentiment or, in other words, what's the current risk tolerance of investors in the existing economic paradigm. During risk on situations, investors tend to have a high appetite for risk to bid up the prices of certain assets in the market. On the other hand, during risk off situations, they become more risk adverse and tend to sell some assets. Now. What assets they sell depends on how risky they believe holding these assets is. Therefore, a risk-on asset would be one that is riskier compared to a risk-off asset, while holding it would normally carry the promise of a better return. Holding it during economic, uh, economic turmoil can also result in a more significant downside. Now that we have that clear, it's worth noting that the current economic climate can be considered uncertain to say the least. The world is coming to a global uh, the world is coming out of a global pandemic. The US is considering rate hikes to battle the increasing inflation. Businesses are facing new paradigms and to top it all up, there's a literal war going on in Europe. So, where does this leave Bitcoin? Question mark. Speaking to Bloomberg Crypto, the chief strategy officer of CoinShares, Meltem Demore, summarized the last few weeks with what's been going on in the world, not limiting the challenges solely to the war in Ukraine. I think it's been a very, a very interesting few weeks. Not only do we have this conflict ha happening in Western and Eastern Europe, but we also recently had the Canadian truckers and their access to banking systems get cut off. It was an in instance where there was a lot of conversation around Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. She argued that there's a growing global awareness for 
uh, that for the first time citizens who really are victims of war that are fought by superpowers they have a choice bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are non-political global money and again we're not only seeing increasing trading activity in ukraine and russia but also a lot in the activity coming in from the u.s as people are looking at what's unfolding around the world maybe this is the start of bitcoin no longer being a risk on asset but but potentially over time becoming a risk off asset naturally demars also explained that a couple of weeks is certain not certainly not enough time to prove this relationship definit definitively but she she is hopeful that the data from the next months and years will help establish the thesis i mean I, i've been thinking about that since day one when i read satoshi's white paper mm -hmm. and the whole you know peer-to-peer -peer system and how blockchain works and po pow Detach okay. yourself from the centralized banking system. Oh well, yeah. Um, Be your own bank. I think it's interesting how Georgia started this article out with talking about uh, uh, risk off and risk on assets. It's kind of just another one of those subsets of basic trading. Um, but you know, it's kind of like you know trying to get the ETF blockchain or Bitcoin ETF set up. Um, there's just these other things that people want to do with the primary stock or the primary uh, coin in this case that are off the main chain or the, the main asset to try to hedge against the decline or in favor of the incline. Like if they think something's going to go higher, you can get these other um, financial, what's it called? Financial vehicles. Um, that people can use to get money or get away from risk, and so the, 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 the priest, they talk, you know, he starts with that article out with this, and how um, Demaris is commenting and work, working with his ideas. Mm -hmm. Anyways, okay. uh, so that's there's not a whole lot of news as there almost never is on Sunday. <laughs> But we found a couple of other articles that we found of interest. Um, I'm going to do the, uh, since our what, one third of our podcast at the moment is female, I'm not female, so I don't have a personal uh, direct connection to this next article um, as it's not personal to me, per, you know, explicitly, because I'm not a woman. But um, I think it would be interesting to get Melissa's perspective on this, but since she's not here at the moment, I'm just going to read the article. By Dimitar Zandrov. 33% of surveyed American women intend to buy crypto in 2022, study finds. The cryptocurrency lending platform BlockFi, BlockFi pardon me, surveyed over 1,000 American women to determine their awareness and sentiments towards the digital asset sector. Per the results, every third female plans to invest in crypto. That's quite a bit. It's a high percentage, rather. Uh, by the end of the year, while 60% said they will purchase in the next three months. Digital assets have been gradually increasing in popularity over the years. However, it is worth noting that the industry has a significant gender gap as the majority of the people find the field that, that find the field intriguing are men. According, isn't, isn't that interesting how uh, this study is similar to our own podcast and that one third of the podcast is women. <laughs> According to the recent BlockFi study, though females are getting more and more involved, 30% of the 1,031 surveyed women intend to enter the digital asset ecosystem by the end of 2022, and as I already said, 60% of those are planning in the next 20 days. Crypto awareness among females is also on the rise. 92% of participants ha admitted having heard about Bitcoin and, and the altcoins. The asset class is often viewed as a financial tool that could help individuals achieve certain uh, personal goals. One in five or 20% of survey women said they invest in crypto to fund a vacation or purchase a home. And there's an article about purchasing a home or rather selling a home coming up. 14% of participants ha uh, believe Bitcoin is a suitable long-term investment. At the same time, 4% see NFT serving the same purposes. 24% of survey women, uh, US women admitted owning digital assets and 70% of those are hodlers having bought over the years and are still keeping their possessions. Woohoo! 70% diamond hands. 
Mm -hmm. That's good to see. Women are smart, apparently. <laughs> so what does that mean with all the people who are, who are selling for, because of FOMO? It's men, obviously. <laughs> Nearly 50% of the participants said that they know how to purchase crypto in comparison to only 23% knew how six months ago. Bitcoin is undisputedly the most popular asset for the demographic. That was shown by the top 10 uh, group. 71% uh, chose it. Dogecoin, sadly, ranked 42% uh, ranked second. And Ethereum, 18% held the third position. Oh, man. That's disappointing. Women also see job perspectives in the industry. One, said, one in 10 said crypto is the most promising career sector. Double the number of participants who pointed out uh, fintech rather subsequently 10 percent stated they intend to apply to a role at a blockchain focused company in the next 12 months speaking for the matter uh flory marquez or, uh not marquez uh founder and svp of operations at BlockFi. it this is a quote she said it's very exciting to know women know that women are becoming more aware of benefits of owning crypto and expressing interest in working in the crypto sector, looking toward the future, my hope is that crypto will become an essential part of everyone's financial wellness plan. End quote. Yes, I hope the best as well. It's good to see. Uh, obviously, per the comments that the majority of the people who are involved in crypto are men, uh, it's great to see that more women are aware of it and are buying it, and at least no, not, no more than just know about it. Like, you know, if your girlfriend or your wife it's new about it because you can't, you won't shut up about it. <laughs> so my, my um, is, that's one aspect, but the difference is, does she know about it and does she care about it and will she be buying it and yeah. involving herself in it, not just because her boyfriend or her husband is into it? Let me ask, what do you think? Why, why is it taking women so long to adopt crypto? Um, my opinion on it is because it's tech. I mean, is it, it? It's tech and it's finance. It's like it's basically fintech, right? Finance tech. Mm -hmm. um, women aren't traditionally known for their finance involvement, and well, I mean, not outside the home, maybe. You know, when it comes to personal finance or home finance, women are probably heavily involved in that. Typically, that's true. Um, but investment strategies, not typical. And when it comes to tech, also not typical. So. It's almost like saying, why aren't more women involved in science? They were never encouraged to do so. Hmm. So, that part, a lot of it, it's just, it's gender roles. I mean, it also depends but, on society, right? But what, what I did notice is that, yes, there is an increase in women in crypto. As of last year, I noticed that there's a lot more women, for sure, adopted crypto. You can definitely find them on Twitter. That's, that's one thing, for sure. So. Like, oh, God, a girl. She's been involved in crypto for like seven or eight years, heavily involved in it. Um, so there are women involved. It's just they're not as many. I mean, it, let's, let's put it this way. If, if, if the shoe were on the other foot and the majority of women were involved in crypto, we would be the weirdos. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, aren't we already weirdos? <laughs> All right, let's see what's Perfect. next. Um, the Justin Bieber article. Yeah. Let's see. Justin Bieber's uh, manager sold his mansion for $18.5 million in Bitcoin. Okay, that's fine. I'll leave it at that. Ave to move forward in Brazil's central bank innovation challenge. Hmm, maybe. Maybe a good read. Let's keep looking. Uh, Switzerland plans to freeze Russian and cryptocurrency assets. Ukraine Dow raises $6.75 million in ETH. And donations for a flag NFT. No, don't do it. <laughs> uh, don't do it. Japanese regulators oh, hold yeah. discussions to fix crypto loopholes and Russia sanctions. Hmm. Now, if the flag NFT came with a with an actual Ukrainian flag, I might be interested. <laughs> Don't do it. Venezuela, Venezuela to raise minimum wage uh, 18 fold by pegging it to half a petro. What? Hold on a second. Let's read that. Okay. Written by Jordan Lyonchev. Venezuela to raise minimum wage 18 fold by pegging it to a, half a petro. The South American nation has seen economic struggles for years, whether prompted by hyperinflation or simply, uh, or simply low salaries. Now, though, the president, Nicolas Maduro, announced a positive development for the locals in the form of an 18-fold increase in the monthly minimum wage. Long before El Salvador legalized Bitcoin, Venezuela already had a compelling history with the cryptocurrency industry. 
At one point, it was among the most advanced nations in terms of digital asset adoption and even dabbled with starting to receive such payments back in 2019. While those plans are yet to become official, the country actually created its own cryptocurrency, Petro, a PTR, which the authorities claimed was backed by Venezuela's oil, natural gas, and mineral reserves. Although the asset has so far failed to gain any real tra traction besides being airdropped to doctors amid the COVID-19 pandemic, President Maduro attributed the upcoming 18x wage increase to it. During a televised speech he gave before 10,000 government workers, the nation's leaders said the minimum monthly salary will become 126 bolivars, or $28, which has become possible by pegging it to the value of half a petro. Quote, you propose to set the workers' basic minimum wage to half a petro approved, and that pushes all the salary tables upwards, he said. The raise will also apply to Social Security pensioners, and Maduro said he had instructed Vice President uh, Delcy Rodriguez to implement the pay increase this month. Uh, has the boulevard stopped plummeting? Question mark. Venezuela's nat uh, national currency lost more than 90% of its value against other fiat currencies in the past several years as hyperinflation officially began in 2016 and was labeled as the, as the worst such case in recent history. Some extreme instances, the inflation number went above 1 million percent, like in 2018. This prompted Maduro's administration to init initiate a new monetary reform by revaluing the bolivar at a ratio of 1 to 1,000. Thus, they created a new currency, the Sovereign Boulevard. With this new denomination of 2, 5, 10, 20, 50, 100, 200, and 500 banknotes, while the new currency might not have been the success that Maduro's envisioned, the rising oil prices, Venezuela has the most oil reserves in the world, and the increasing exports of rum and cocoa have helped the boulevard stabilize lately. Nevertheless, a recent study showed that at least half of all payments in the country's capital, uh, Caracas, were still made using U.S. dollars. Uh oh, we're still mm. using U.S. dollars. So it's like he's saying one thing, but a lot of things are still like uh, it's just You can't force it. Yeah, you can't make it happen overnight. Yeah. It just doesn't work that way. I'm all, but it's I will say it's interesting though. H and X, dude, I like that. I mean, do it. An international uh, uh, pandemic could possibly cause it to happen overnight. But um, that, that's unprecedented. I mean, when would that ever happen? Hmm. <laughs> would, you, uh, would you take that offer, 18x, if you switch over to crypto? Oh, fuck yeah. But it's a centralized <laughs> yes, of course crypto. I would. It's owned by the government. I mean, 18x what I make now, now would be insane. Yeah. Um, but the other problem is also it's 18x on on their version of the of the coin so it's kind of like the problem with their coin is their coin is going down in value constantly um if let's say that 18x was today and then by let's a see. month from now the 18x was worth 1x mm -hmm. it, you'd just be stupid to not have done it because the value of the local you know local currency was going down anyways so um i would take it just because at least in, in venezuela the most stable thing is bitcoin <laughs> It's not even it's not even in coin gecko if it doesn't exist in coin gecko then it's a scam all right did, did you get the link i sent you for the uh, uh, let's see. fiat currency loop oh yeah earlier really yeah mm -hmm. yeah so um i was actually just perusing that just because i wanted to see like you know the, the uh what was the, the local currency for venezuela mm -hmm. what's it called again it's, it's the petro right yeah so let's say we can find the petro on coin market caps fiat currency list I didn't even find it when I did a search for it. Yeah, it's, it's not there. Um, all the way down to the top 100. Yeah, it's not. Out of 101 coins, the Petro is not even on the list. Yeah. Um, but the thing I find interesting is just uh, that the Chinese yuan apparently is valued more against the against Bitcoin than the U.S. dollar is, mm -hmm. according to this list. They're saying that the Chinese yuan is worth 404 sats. Now, I will make a point that 
I think that the exchange rate of the one to the dollar is not a one to one ratio at all. It's like a 1000 to one ratio. Mm -hmm. to, uh, CNY to USD is, yeah. Okay, so if we do one US dollar, yeah, it's six, it's six to one. So that's the reason it's compared to Bitcoin, it's, it's different. Um, but it's interesting to see like the Euro and the US dollar are neck and neck on their value. It's like the US dollar is currently like 2,500 sats. The euro is about 2,800 sats. And the reason, of course, that the Japanese uh, yen is like only 22 sats is because it's, you know, like its comparison to the dollar is very different. Uh, let's see, USD to Japan, to the Japanese yen is, um, yeah, 115 to 1. So that's the reason you see, like, why, why is the yen worth, worth so little? Well, it's because the yen is like a penny. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's not it's not really fair to compare it directly although it's interesting to see that the i thought the pound sterling was was worth because like the uh, british pound is basically like the us dollar in the sense that it's a single um primary format for fiat but i always thought that the pound was worth more than the dollar so it's weird to see it being far less on the on versus bitcoin i would have thought it would have been above the us dollar like I would have thought the euro would have been above the US dollar, so I don't know. Or no, no, it, you know, it should be below. Never mind. I'm thinking of the wrong direction. So it's just interesting to, to see where the the Bitcoin is currently fourth position on this list. I thought you know one hundred thousand sats to one Bitcoin because that's exactly the trading rate. But um, the Russian ruble has moved down to twenty three sats. That really sucks. <laughs> it's also funny to see the Mexican pesos below it. So, anyways, mm -hmm. yeah, not sorry. trying to distract. So, if you want to, um, I guess, earn an 18x income, just move over to Venezuela. Yeah, that yeah for a month, and then you won't be rich anymore. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I'm just saying. Yeah. Based on the inflationary tendencies of the So Venezuelan what's not stopping people from actually taking currency. the money and flipping it over to Bitcoin? That's, that's um, I, I think we talked about this, right? Um, this is the ongoing saga or the ongoing ideal of... Um, of Bitcoin or any alternative currency. Like, let me just start the analogy again. If you tried to go to the grocery store and you had a, a nugget of gold, maybe a flake, few flakes of gold in your pocket, and you said, I want to buy this bag of groceries, I'll give you a few flakes of gold. They would say, no, we need US dollars or you know a credit card, which would allow us to get US dollars from, from that company that right. you are engaged with. Um, that's why, that is how it works currently in the system. If you say, hey, I've got this currency that a lot of people are aware of, like gold, and you know, Bitcoin is kind of like digital gold. Um, I will give you, let's say, uh, 6,000 or 12,000 sats, Satoshis, in exchange for this bag of groceries. And they would say, no, we need US dollars. Um, that's the problem. Yes, this is huge increase. But if you can't trade the thing that people are giving you for the things you need, then does that thing actually have value? And even if the country's president has said, this is valid currency, those people have to accept the valid currency for it to be valid. Um, I don't know if you, you probably sooner, depending upon the clerk and the checkout line for the grocery store, be able to pass them a couple of joints or maybe some cigarettes in exchange, or maybe even lottery tickets in exchange for that bag of groceries. Then you would likely be able to change Bitcoin for groceries because that clerk would likely be able to take those other things as payment and trade them for money more easily than Bitcoin in those, in those situations. Mm -hmm. So it really just depends on what individual is willing to exchange that for and accept the value of that thing but um i don't know i 
Let's take the supposition that the United States tomorrow or Monday, let's say, yeah, because that'd be Monday, that'd be tomorrow, um, said officially Bitcoin is now a currency of the United States. You can use Bitcoin in any store anywhere or the U.S. dollar in any store anywhere. Mm -hmm. I still think that maybe the major chains would go, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do it. You know, because Biden said or somebody you know, officially said, the finance minister of the United States said, yes, this is legit. We can get our dollars for the Bitcoin you're giving us. But if you're going to say from the standpoint, let's say we got rid of the dollar all, uh, altogether tomorrow and we had no dollar at all. The dollar just wasn't, had no value anymore. So I'm going to give you my $20 bill. No, sir, we can't accept that anymore. Um, as of tomorrow, like just officially, I would bet you more than the value of that $20 bill that people would still accept it. Not just because they were so unfamiliar with the change, like they just didn't know about it, but because even if they knew that the, the dollar had been disabled, certain people would still believe in its value so whole, whole, wholeheartedly that they would still accept it against the rules. So it's, 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 it's a hard thing to shift the perspective of you know an entire populace of people. <laughs> really, really is hard to... How long is... Has Putin been trying to shift the perspective of the people of his own country, let alone the Ukrainians and the rest of the world? He's been spending decades trying to shift people's thought, and it still hasn't worked. So, just because you make a decree doesn't mean anyone's going to believe you. Well, I just found out where you can buy the uh, petro at. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You know, get some petro in exchange for your pulse? It's on Yobit. <laughs> Oh, Yobit, cool. Yeah, yeah I can use Yobit forever. But there's like four dollars of liquidity. Like that's just four dollars. Like no liquidity, exactly. No that. liquidity at all. Or very little. So. Hey, you could be the liquidity if you put some some coin in there. I'm good. I, don't I know like this is. A, I've done that on. Uh, just donate me the 18x in uh, my in the C3 Media crypto wallet. We'll take that. The. Um, on South Exchange, I have been the liquidity occasionally. Trade, 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 trades doge for other shit coins. <laughs> Just because it's funny. All right, I'll let's get out of here. Let's plug in the coin tree and get out of here. All right. Uh, yeah, that's the plug. Pull that up real quick. So, if you made it this far in our short podcast on Sunday, we appreciate it. A thumbs up on YouTube and any other way of liking our content and other platforms we appreciate that it makes our show a little bit more popular and uh, gets more people more people to come over here and check it out and if you like our content you can subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell we post every wednesday and sunday you can come in and join us through the coin tree link uh, on discord and you can check out our marketplace we, we do nft stuff as well as just token stuff in general just for fun um we're also on Patreon. You can check us out there, as well as you can donate through Bitcoin, Ethereum, Binance, Bat, or Raven, as well as hopefully Dynamo in the future. So uh, thank you for listening to our podcast here on Sunday afternoon. All right, Cryptonauts, with that said, until next time, stack sats and huddle. Adios.